Hi, it's Tim with Tim Boy Photography. This week's tutorial is Gear Does Matter. So we've always heard that gear doesn't matter, it's not about the gear, things like that, but there's some truth in that, and then part of that is just wrong. And if you have a lousy tool, and the tool uh, doesn't work very well, or it's uh, a really old tool, or maybe it's uh, bent or broken or in some way, it's going to be really difficult for you to make the best image possible. And at the same time, if you have a really good tool and it's state-of-the-art tool and you know how to use it, and that's the caveat here, you have to know how to use your tools. But if you have a really good tool and you know how to use it, then it's going to be easier to get the end product, to get a good picture, or if it's a saw, to, to make a good cut. There is a point where gear matters if you're a beginner, because if you have a really good tool, it's going to be easier to get a good image. And then at a certain point in your career, gear doesn't matter. You have mastered light. You've mastered all the exposure things. You've, you know your subjects. You know how to get the image. And then gear is not quite as important because you know you can work around it in things. But in the beginning part of your career as a photographer, gear does matter. And so this video, as this channel, is really geared to the beginning and intermediate bird photographer because those are the people who quite often end up with a little bit lower quality gear and get frustrated because they can't get the pictures that they want. So gear does matter, especially in the beginning of your bird photography career. This past weekend, I started making a hamster enclosure for my wife. And I had a really old skill saw. It's probably 25 years old. And I think the blade was bent on it. I couldn't get a straight cut. So I went out and I bought a new tool. I bought this cordless DeWalt circular saw and I could get a straight cut with it. It's a really nice tool. It's lightweight, it uh, cuts really well, the blade's sharp, all that kind of stuff made it really easy to get a straight cut. So I don't use a circular saw very often. So part of it to me is a skill level thing. I don't have a skill level like a carpenter would have or a woodworker would have when using a saw like this. So part of it is I'm using the equipment to make up for a skill set that I don't have. And here's the thing about really good equipment too. Professionals buy really good top of the line gear because it is durable, it lasts longer, it's the right tool for the job, things like that. But they also buy really good tools because they know it's easier to use them, it's less frustrating, and they know that they can get to the end result a really good piece of woodworking or a really good photograph. They can get there really easily. So here's a picture of a red-tailed hawk. And I took this back when I was shooting film. I took this with a 300 millimeter f4 lens with a 2.0 teleconverter on it. And this was back in the early 2000s. What do we know about things? Lenses weren't quite as sharp then. The 2x teleconverters were pretty bad back then. And I got a soft image and it just isn't a very good image. But I was thrilled to be a bird photographer uh, and I was out having a lot of fun. But the images just weren't sharp and I get all these soft images from them because I didn't have the best piece of gear. A couple of years after I was started bird photography, I was able to get a 500 millimeter f4.5 autofocus lens, no IS. It was used, I got it for you know two or $3,000. And guess what? My bird photography improved overnight, not because I was better, but because I had a good piece of equipment. I could now shoot at f4.5 or f6.3 with a 1.4 teleconverter on, which is sharper, and I got better images. And it's all because I changed pieces of equipment and I had a piece of equipment that was better quality than the prior one. In February of 2015, about six months after the Canon 7D Mark II came out, I was able to borrow the 300 millimeter f2.8L IS Pro lens from Canon. I borrowed that particular lens because that was the fastest autofocusing lens at that time. And that 70 Mark II, when it came out, was the fastest autofocusing camera on the market at that time. And so I was able to get Peregrine Falcon shots that I had never gotten before. So I've got birds taking off. I got birds flying. I mean, it was just a really remarkable difference. And I spent a weekend shooting with that lens and I, I got incredible shots. 
And here's the kind of image that I got before. So here I've got kind of a static shot with a 600 millimeter F4. The bird's about to take off or he's doing a wing stretch. If I was trying to get him taking off, I'd get a couple of shots like this and then he'd be gone because the lens just wouldn't autofocus fast enough for him. And here's the shot that I got with the Canon 7D Mark II and the 300 millimeter F2.8 lens. And wow, it's super sharp. And I got the bird flying. He jumped up off of his perch and it just worked really, really well. So my main point is that gear matters because if you're beginning, there's so many obstacles to overcome in bird photography. And having a good piece of equipment, a really good sharp lens, or a really fast camera that autofocuses fast and has a fast frame rate, it's just going to make it easier for you. And it's going to take a lot of the frustration of bird photography away, and you're going to get better results, and you're going to have more fun. And to me, there's two things about bird photography. It should be fun, and you should get good results, right? You should get images that you're proud of. And to do that, sometimes in the very beginning, you just need to spend a few more dollars and get a good piece of gear. Now, I'm not talking about gas, you know, GAS, gear acquisition syndrome. That is different. That is buying gear just for buying and having the gear sake. What I'm saying here is that buy a really good camera, buy one really good lens, and then use that. Learn how to use that lens, learn how to use that camera, and you're going to get good photos. Don't just spend money. That's not going to get you anywhere. Buy two things, a really good camera, a really good lens, you're done. Well, you might need to buy some storage cards and some extra batteries and maybe a tripod, but you get the idea. Make sure you get a camera and lens combo that is made by the same manufacturer. I highly suggest this because some of the third-party lenses and lenses from one company, one brand, you put it on another brand, never quite works as optimal and as fast for the autofocus as if you match the brand name. So as an example, I shoot Olympus now. I don't use the Panasonic 100 to 400 millimeter lens because it doesn't autofocus as fast. Now, Olympus came out with a 100 to 400 millimeter lens and I'll probably get one in September when they ship. You want to get a camera that has fast frames per second, 10, 12, 14 frames per second. You want it to have fast, accurate autofocusing. You want it to uh, autofocus to acquire the subject really quickly. You can go on YouTube and get reviews for different cameras and different lenses to find out which one works the best for you. You want to have a focal length of a minimum of 400 millimeters. If you have a crop sensor, 400 will, could give you 640 or 800 or something. Or you could put a 1.4 teleconverter on there, which are usually pretty sharp, and that would be okay. You want to stay away from the 2x converters because they just aren't very sharp. Sony, Olympus, Canon, Nikon, they all make really good cameras. They all make really good lenses. If you match that the brand name with the camera and the lens, you're going to get a good combination that will work well for you. You know, go to the reviews on uh, YouTube, find out about your camera that you're thinking about buying, find out about the lens you're thinking about buying, and then just go straight forward and go ahead and get that. So you know that I shoot with Olympus. There are reasons why Olympus works for me. I'll put a link up to why I switched to Olympus up in the corner. Gear does matter for the beginning and the intermediate bird photographer. It just makes it easier to get a good result. You're going to lessen the learning curve. Get a really good lens. Get a lens that's going to last you for a long time. In my career as a bird photographer, my primary lenses, I had the 300 f4. I had a 500 f4.5. I had a 600 f4 and now I'm on my Olympus. So in 20 plus years of bird photography, I've had four main lenses that I've used. So lenses are gonna last you a long time. Hey, and just a little bit of a teaser here. I'm coming out with a site guide for Bosque del Apache. It should be out in September or late August. So that's what I think about gear now. I think it does matter. I used to say that it didn't matter. Lots of people say it doesn't matter, but gear does matter. Take what people on YouTube say with a grain of salt, even me. If you want to learn more about bird photography, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more videos and it'll improve your bird photography, hopefully. And then remember, if you even want to go further with bird photography, pick up a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available as a trade paperback on Amazon and also a Kindle. Hey, thanks for watching this week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.